Well, hi folks, welcome to today's edition of My Life with Robert Burns. I'm Douglas McKenzie, and joining me in conversation with, uh, with one of our cronies is Jim Thompson. Hi, Jim. Hi, Douglas. Hi, everybody. Uh, Jim and me are friends and colleagues from Newcomen at Burns Club. Today we're joined by another musician who tell us about the unique instrument that he's had the honour of playing. Cronies everywhere, please welcome Alistair McCulloch. Hello there, everyone. Nice to be with you. Hi, Alistair. Hello there, Douglas. Perhaps you could just start off with telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I grew up in Cumnock, actually. My, my dad, my late father, was a police sergeant in, in Cumnock. So I lived in Cumnock until I was about 10. Then the family moved to Ayr. And I've pretty much been in Ayr ever since, apart from my student days in Glasgow. So um, I, I first picked up a fiddle when I was aged nine. Um, my late grandmother gave me a, a half-size fiddle at that point and I started music lessons. Um, but my, my dad played the, the pipes and the, the fiddle as well. He was a prominent member of the, the Scottish Fiddle Orchestra and the local Strasbourg Society. societies. So, so at a very young age, I was kind of exposed to music, um, traditional music in the house. And there was a lot of people we used to visit and uh, play tunes in the front room. Um, and when I was about, probably about 10, I joined the Ern Presswick Strasbourg Youth Society and was a member throughout my teens. Um, Shortly after that, the Ayrshire Fiddle Orchestra was founded as well, which is a youth orchestra, um, which I um, joined in 1982 and had a very long spell in the fiddle orchestra as a player. Um, I was the leader of the orchestra in the late 80s and I became um, the musical director actually in 2003 and I was the musical director for about eight or nine years. Um, but that was a great experience because the Ayrshire Fiddle Orchestra, you know, they, they embark in these international tours every couple of years. So I mean, we've been all around the world. So we've been with several tours of America and Canada. And uh, we've been to China, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Um, in recent years, I've been to South Africa and Japan as well. So it really has been a, a worldwide thing. So that was a that was great in that it gave me a, a grounding um, in the music and the, the discipline of playing in an orchestra. And, but there's a, there's a huge social part of it as well. And I've, I've got so many pals and um, friends that I, I met, you know, when I was a, a boy, you know, playing the fiddle in orchestras. Um, I should also mention that I, at the same time, I was a member of the, the Scottish Fiddle Orchestra, which was the National Fiddle Orchestra, which was founded by John Mason. So I was a very prominent member of the orchestra for a long, long time, from 1985, I think, through until about 2001. And I'm still officially a lifelong mem member of the orchestra. Um, and uh, in fact, I played a concert with them about say, just the year before lockdown. I was guesting with orchestra in Usher Hall in Edinburgh, which was nice, because uh, at that point it had been 15 years since I last played with them. So I studied music at the University of Strathclyde and I graduated in 1998 uh, with a degree in music. And uh, ever since I've been kind of making my living as a, a professional musician, um, which is, you know, a very interesting job in that I, I do quite a lot of performing in different guises. Um, I've had a Cayley band going for, actually the Cayley band Coiler has been going for over 30 years now. And I've been a member of various other dance bands and folk groups. And so I've done a lot of touring and um, I've done a lot of concerts and recitals and um, a lot of broadcasting on the radio and quite a fair bit of TV work over the years. Um, I also teach, so my, my, my day job, which is part time, but I, I do, work for the, the, uh, the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland in Glasgow. So I'm, I'm one of the, the fiddle instructors there. And I've been there for about going on 15 years, I think. And um, it's a great place to work. And obviously at the moment, everything's on Zoom. So it's a, a different experience. It's been a real learning curve for everyone over the past year. Um, but you know, everyone's making the best of the situation. Um, and I suppose at, at this moment in time, that's one of the most tricky things of all, like being in the music profession, is the fact that you're not getting to play so the, the whole social scene has gone, you know, all the festivals and concerts and you know, the travel, that's all um, obviously been shelved for the, the, the time being. So, so I'm, I'm hoping it'll come back in the not too distant future because I'm really missing the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and going back to your, your, your schooling, did you, uh, was it coming up where you started started school? Yes, I, I went to primary school in, in Cumnock. Um, and my secondary education was at Kyle Academy in Ayr. All right. So you're a Green Mill boy, were you? 
Actually, Barshier. Barshier, right. Yeah. right. Uh -huh. I think we moved to Ayr when I was in about primary five, if I remember right. Uh -huh. And 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 were you always going to have a career in music, or or what were your interests when you were younger, other than music? Well, you know, I, I was always interested in, in in playing fiddle, and I suppose I was encouraged a lot by the family, and um, and I suppose I had a, a, a talent for it, and it wasn't a chore. I mean, I enjoyed it. I liked playing, and I, I was always quite focused, and I practiced a lot to get better. Um, but I, mean, I was also quite keen in sport. I mean, I played football when I was younger. And I, Actually, I still play football, <laughs> um, so uh, I mean, I, so I, mean, I do have other interests. I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite keen in fishing. Um, I like wildlife and bird watching and walking and uh, getting out and about. So it's yeah, it's, it's nice to have other things that you do in, in, instead of music. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I, I noticed from my, my, my research and which is usually in Facebook, some some photographs of you up in the hills. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got one or two pals who are. Uh, Hill walkers and have been, you know, Monroe bagging for many years, but I'm not quite at that level yet. But I've done a few Monroes, but I suppose just having a bit more time in my hands, particularly mm -hmm. summer last year. I, I mean, I did quite a few hills, uh, both locally and a wee bit further afield as well, which was really nice. So, man, I, mm -hmm. I, I like getting out and about in the hills. And, uh, and but, but, but it's walking rather, rather than climbing. Yeah, uh -huh, it's, I, mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I can I'm, imagine I'm, that the, 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 the need to use your fingers. And climbing might uh, might conflict with the need to protect your fingers. Well, that's for the right. Yeah, it's, a, it's always a consideration. <laughs> and uh, where where have you been with the the fiddle? You've been uh, in lots of places that you mentioned, but anywhere in particular that are, are, are great memories. You know, I, I, I kind of I'm thinking at some point I should start keeping a diary and looking back in performances and trips I've, I've done in the past because there's so so many wonderful experiences when I've been really lucky I mean, even within Scotland I mean, I've, I've seen every single nook and cranny of the country I've, I mean, I've been to Shetland about 20 odd times, I've been to Orkney many times in the Western Isles and the, the, the Hebrides and I tour in the Highlands every summer so I've seen all around the Highlands and you know the, 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 the East Coast and the borders so I've been really lucky I've seen a fair bit of England as well um, and I've seen a lot of Ireland, but interestingly, not Wales. I've, I've only ever been to, to Wales once. Um, but I mean, it's just because I'm a performer. I mean, you, you, you end up in the most unusual places, maybe places you wouldn't go to under your own steam. So when I mentioned like the tours with the orchestras I was involved in when I was younger. So as I said, we'd, I've been to Canada and America many times and uh, Australia, New Zealand, China. Um, I've, I've been to Africa, you know, I've, been, I've played in some weird and wonderful places, Nigeria, um, uh, Kazakhstan, Venezuela. Um, so like, you never quite know if, if where you're going to end up. You know, you, the, the phone rings from it. it could be a Caledon Society in Brazil, or it could be, you know, St Andrews Society in, in Yemen or, the, you know, the Middle East. So, the, 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 yeah, I've, I've been lucky to, to travel widely. There might, must be some significant challenges there, though, taking an instrument and, and how does it react to different climates and such like? Yeah, you have to be careful. Like, uh, I mean, I've been in the Middle East on quite a number of occasions. I used to go out there to Doha for St Andrew's night. Um, fortunately for us, it been late November. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little bit milder, but still the equivalent of a hot summer's day in Scotland. But there was one time I was in Dubai and... July and it was I mean, you, you basically couldn't go outside it was unbearable the heat and very humid so that's not good for a stringed instrument humidity and high temperature um, but I've been at the other end of the spectrum as well and you know like I remember one of the the times I was in Kazakhstan we ended up at uh, halfway up this mountain it was minus 26 degrees <laughs> so that's not great for for fiddles either <laughs> so you so you, you were you playing the fiddle up the mountain or or just well, I wasn't, no, just, like often when you're on these trips I and mean, you, you're performing in the evenings at functions and events but like going to a different place I mean, I'm always quite keen to get out and about and see a little bit of the, the, the new place particularly if I haven't been before so that's that's one of the, the perks of the job actually so you, you might go out to the Middle East for three or four days but you're only actually doing one performance so you can maybe get a, a day off where you can go and explore and, and, and take in the sights. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you, you talked about being at Kyle Academy after school and then, then going on to University of Strathclyde, did you say? Uh -huh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and how did you get the connection with the, the Royal Conservatoire? Did that come after Strathclyde? Yeah, I mean, when I was looking to go to university and study music, I mean, at that time, you could only really study classical music at the Conservatoire or at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama, as it was back then. Um, but the course I did was the BA Applied Music degree, which was a kind of new initiative at the time. That's This is back in the, the mid-90s. Um, and it, it allowed students to study like other genres of music. So even if you were a jazz musician or a rock musician or a folk musician, you could, you know, you could study uh, these genres as, uh, you know, at degree level, which was great for me. So, um, but shortly after that, the, the traditional music course at the, the conservatoire was established. And I, and I had, you know, pals who were on that course and um, quite a lot of links to it. So um, I think after I graduated, I mean, I, I was kind of, loosely linked to the conservatoire as an external examiner and yeah, I mean I used to occasionally go in and do workshops so so after a, a year or two I was asked if I would be interested in, in replacing one of the fiddle tutors who was standing down so that's how I kind of fell into that job which was yeah. very lucky and, and it's, as I say it's a, it's a great place to work it's a really vibrant community and it's, it's there's always an energy in the building there's so much going on at any one time so it's a, it's a fantastic resource. And what about your own family? Your, your, your kids follow you along the musician route? Yeah, well, my, my son's 14, my daughter's 11, so they're, they're both playing. Um, Charlotte, um, my daughter, plays the cello. She started about, about a year and a half ago, and she's doing well with that. And my, my son, he's he did try the fiddle, but I didn't... Uh, I think he... I'll say that again. Um, my son, Hughie, did try the fiddle, but I think because his dad plays, it wasn't cool. So <laughs> he's the piano and he's, he's, doing, he's doing pretty well with the piano. Excellent. And uh, any particular ambition for your career? Anything that you, you, you would still like to do? There's, there's always new projects in the go. Um, but I, I've got various albums out, like solo albums and albums with bands I've played with but you're always looking to to the future and I'd like to do more of that and um, I publish but I've, I write music and compose as well so I've, I've published two books uh, to date so I'm currently working in material for a third book but that's some way off because I'm not a prolific writer but uh, it just uh, it happens when it happens that it will take me maybe a few years to compile enough material to publish another book mm -hmm. uh, but it's something mm -hmm. I enjoy but I think just yeah, getting, getting was, back, 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 back to touring. And, and I mean, I, I'm, I was supposed to be touring in China with my own trio uh, back at the, the, the autumn of 2020, but obviously that's been put back. It was actually put back originally to 2021. Now it's going to be 2022. Um, but it, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. I've been, I've been in China twice, but it's a, it, this tour will be different because it's uh, it's not an orchestra. It's me with my trio and various other Scottish bands going out to play at a few like newly established Scottish festivals. Mm -hmm. so, and, be and, and who's in the trio? Well, there's myself and there's there's two kind of stalwarts of the Scottish folk scene. We've got a guy called Aaron Jones, who he plays the guitar and the bazooki, and he's a, he's a great singer. And, and he's been a professional musician for 30 years, and he's, he's played in umpteen, like, profile, high-profile bands, you know, the Old Blind Dog's been one, uh, the Kate Rusby band, Crave Rua, Sealy Who, so I mean, he's really well respected and established. And he was actually voted the, the Folk Instrumentalist of the Year in the Trad Music Awards a few years back. So so Aaron Jones and uh, the other guy is Mark Duff, who was a founder member of the band Capper Cayley. So he's, he's one of the top whistle players in the country. Um, and uh, him and I have worked together for, for a long, long time. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the trio... We tend to, I mentioned the tour of the Highlands, we, we've been doing that for nearly 20 years. Um, it's kind of growing arms and legs. It started off life as a, a kind of way to see parts of our own country that hadn't, hadn't been to before. And also, to, to be honest, it was a kind of boys' trip away for a few days with fishing rods and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> cues and, and darts and a few pints. So, uh, but it, it's kind of growing now and it's, you know, we tour all over the, the country um, every summer. So, yeah, it's, it's great. Good, good, good. Um, you mentioned uh, composition, and, and I noticed um, that 
you use your composition as a means of raising a bit of money for charity by uh, auctioning off the the naming rights for for one tune. Yeah, that was that was recently. Um, but like, well, I, we'll talk about the Greg Fiddle shortly, but um, I'm obviously quite closely linked to the National Trust for Scotland. I have been for a while. I mean, in, in days gone by, the National Trust used to have their annual cruises, so I had the pleasure of playing as a fiddler, uh, uh, like on the entertainment party uh, on ships at the time. And um, that you know that was that was another experience. I, mean, I got I got up to the Arctic one time in one of the cruises, which was a great experience. Uh, I think another time we sort of cruised the entire coast of, uh, of Scotland. So, and you know, I've, I've, we've got places like St Kilda and the Faroe Islands. And so, so that, yeah, that, that's that's my connection with the National Trust initially. Um, but they have a foundation USA, which was twenty years old last year. I mean, and the, the US Foundation contributes a fair bit of money each year to the National Trust for Scotland to run projects in, in this country. So, one of the the main fundraising events is the, a grand auction at the gala in New York every year, which usually raises a fair bit of money. So, so I thought it would be nice to donate a piece of music. So that's what I did. So I wrote a, a slow air, which was unnamed and uh, it was recorded, and then that went out for auction. So someone made a very kind donation and and, and named it Bruce Robert Burton. So there we go. Very good. Well, you mentioned the Greg Fiddle, which is a, a link to talking a bit about Burns. So I'll hand over to Jim just now to maybe get you into a conversation around that. Sure. Yeah, Alistair, normally my first question to people is, how did you get involved with Burns? But having been an ex-colleague of your father and shared many a top table with him at Burns Suppers, I'm presuming it was in the home. Absolutely, yeah. Um, my, my dad was a, a great Burnsian. Um, he, he was a regular speaker at Burns Suppers um, all over southern Scotland. Uh, in fact, he got as far as, you know, India. He went to India several times, um, and he. I think he went to Israel one time as well. But it, it was also, a, 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 as I mentioned earlier, a, a very good piper. So that's obviously a good skill to have if you're a Burns entertainer. So he, he could sometimes, you know, combine the playing of the pipes with you know doing a speech or reciting a poem or whatever. So, um, but when it, he was uh, very encouraging for like and, and very interested in Burns, and you know there, there was always a lot of talk about Robert Burns and, and the house and we visited a lot of famous landmarks locally and and uh, you know so I, I suppose I kind of absorbed that and uh, that kind of developed an interest in Burns for myself. Do you get involved with Burns at the school at all? Yeah well, I do remember like the primary school learning you know various poems like Address the Haggis and To a Moose and maybe excerpts from Thomas Shanter um, so yeah, but there was there was a wee bit of uh, say, there was, well, there was a Burns competition every year, so that was that was part of it. And obviously, your involvement with Burns is mostly related to, to being a musician. And there's a very special fiddle that I think you need to tell the people about. So go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm very honoured in that I'm really the only person that's allowed to play the Greg fiddle. Um, the Greg fiddle belonged to William Gregg, who was the dance master at the Bachelors Club in Turbolton. And Burns, when he was aged about 20, was a regular attender at the dances in, at the Bachelors Club. Um, I think Burns kind of portrayed to his father that he was he was going to the dancing classes to brush up on his manners, but of course, quite a few uh, young ladies there, so I'm sure that was the reason he was going to the Bachelors Club. <laughs> but, uh, so Greg played this fiddle for Burns to dance to and you know the, the room in the Bachelors Club fairly small and it's well known that Burns played the fiddle himself so you'd like to think that he would have picked it up a few times and, and, and played a few tunes uh, but the instrument itself it, it was it was discovered in bits um, near Mocklin about going on 30 years ago and at that point it was passed to Wallace Galbraith who was the founder of the Ayrshire Fiddle Orchestra and my first violin teacher so Wallace was kind of instrumental in getting the instrument restored at that time. Uh, and he owned the instrument for quite a number of years. And so I got to play it, you know, you know, about for the first time, probably it'd be going on 20 years since I first played the instrument. Um, in later years, it was passed to the National Trust and it became part of the collection um, at the Burns Birthplace Museum in Alloway. 
So, um, I, I mean, I, I was speaking to Chris Waddle recently about it, and I, I think it's possibly the most um, requested artifact that's in the museum that like people want to see, which is which is great. So, so it spends most of its life hanging up in a, a glass case at the museum, and but a few times a year it comes out and I get to play it. And then there's always you know the, the, the Burns Cottage Burn Supper, and the Bachelors Club Burn Supper. Um, there's, you know, there's various you know government and corporate events that I've been asked to play at over the years as well, and in association with the National Trust. So it's I mean, it's a real honour, as I said, and it's the instrument itself is quite fascinating because it's very ornate. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of very intricate hand painted decorations on the instrument, which is quite unusual uh, for for Scottish fiddles, uh, and it was probably made by a local craftsman, and it, it's a wee bit approximate, and it's, it's not. Uh, it doesn't conform to the, the dimensions exactly to a, a, a modern day violin. So for that reason, it's quite tricky to play. Well, the, the neck of the instrument is quite short, um, so your finger positions are different. And it has a baroque setup as well, so it, it doesn't have a chin rest where you, you tend to hold the instrument. And the strings are you, the, your traditional strings made of gut. So all of these things combined make it... Um, a grand old lady that's quite difficult to play, but but that said, I, I've been playing it for long enough to know, um, you know, how to play it. And it's kind of a good thing to see. Did the National Trust let you take it to more mundane events at all? Um, not really, to be honest. That um, understandably, it's insured for a lot of money, and um, any time the instrument leaves the museum, it has to be accompanied by a curator. So any time I play it, the curator is, is is never far away. So. so <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I remember when we when we got you to come up to Muirkirk for the Lepreque Festival, um, that we to we to organise um, the the curator to to have a co accommodation when he was there keeping an eye on the fiddle, and um, we had to make sure that we we contributed enough to the cost of the insurance to to get it there. Um, yeah. But it was it, it was it was really really worthwhile because everybody was there was was enthralled that night. Yeah, no, no, I remember that night. That was a lovely wee night in Muirkirk. Um, well, last year, or, well, about a year and a half ago, um, Pete Clark, who's a prominent fiddler, we did a, a show at the Scottish Parliament called The Twa Fiddles because Pete lives in Perthshire and he is one of the few players who's allowed to play Neil Gow's fiddle. And uh, if, if you know your, your Burns, you'll know that Burns and Gow met in 1787 when Burns was on his tour of the Highlands. Uh, yeah, I would, I would love to have been a fly in the wall at the, the meeting between Burns and Gow. I'm pretty, pretty sure we would have had a few drums and maybe played a few tunes. And, uh, well, Burns actually used three or four of Gow's melodies to put his words to. Uh, the best known probably Major Graham of Inch Brackey, which is the original tune for My Love Is Like a Red, Red Rose. Um, so, going back to the, the Twa Fiddles, Thing. We, we also did a show in the Gaty, the same thing the year before. So Pete and I dress up in period costume and uh, the, the scene is very much, you know, round a fireplace with a couple of drums and, and of the period. And we play music very much associated with Neil Gowan and Robert Burns. So that, that's quite a nice thing to do as well, very historic. I, I was just going to say, would that give us a, a, a link into encouraging you to maybe give us a, a tune? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well... well since we've mentioned that tune, Major Graham of Inch Bracky, I'll, I'll play that. It's, a, it's, a, it's one that I often play on the Greg Fiddle. Um, I don't have the Greg Fiddle today, I've got my own one, but <laughs> so, so I'll play this tune up and I'll, I'll play Major Graham of Inch Bracky by, by Neil Gowden.
beautiful. Thanks very much. Um, I, what do you think, Jim? I think we we'll managed to persuade Alistair to give us another one before we finish. Well, definitely, because Burns once wrote, I'm a fiddler and a poet, so he was a fiddler first, so we need to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> do you do what, anything what, 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 What's your thoughts, Alistair, on, on, on whether Burns... Um, let me start that again. What, what, what's your thoughts, Alistair, on, on the standard that Burns would play and whether or not he was actually reading music at that time? Yeah, it's hard to know that, that there is evidence of his sister commenting on his, his playing and, and not being of a particularly high standard. Uh, but I think he clearly had a very musical ear. The fact he was able to adapt melodies, you know, I mentioned Neil Gow, there was also other fiddle composers of the day, uh, William Marshall of Flockabers, who was a very, very highly respected player and composer. Um, he wrote a tune called Admiral Gordon Strasbe, which Burns used as the original tune for Of All the Earths, The Wind Can Blow. And so he must have had a very musical ear and uh, 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 he was very interested in, you know, tunes, both traditional tunes and tunes which were being composed at that time. And I think in his later life, when he was an exciseman, I mean, he would be, you know, travelling on horseback all around the country and that would be a great way for him to, you know, collect melodies and, you know, hear new tunes and, um, so I think he, he, he certainly had a, an incredibly musical ear and, and, and a, a great musical appreciation. He maybe wasn't a great fiddler, but I'm pretty sure he'd be able to have knocked out quite a few tunes. I'm just, I'm just wondering, as we're talking about Burns and we're talking about fiddle playing and you're a fiddle player, have you ever contributed to Burns suppers? Yes, a, a lot, actually. I mean, to be honest, I played more often at Burns suppers when I was younger. Um, I mean, looking back, because my dad was in the police, um, I, I, several times I played at the, the, the police burn supper, which is a, a large gathering. I think it used to take place in the Eglinton Rooms at the race course. So I, I remember appearing at that a few times and um, I, I appeared for Irvine Burns Club and a few occasions. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them are, you know, if I was in my 20s, so I, I can't remember the specifics exactly, but... Um, but, but even now, like in, in later life, I, I mentioned the, the one in Burns Cottage. I've, I've been playing at that for the past few years. Um, and of course, last year when we went to the, the US, um, we, we, I think there was something like 20 separate events that I, I, I played at with the Greg Fiddle and a lot of these were Burns Suppers. So, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, something that I like to do. I mean, I, I, I mean if, if January passes and I haven't, Played at least one burn supper, then there's a, there's a there's a hole there, so it's something I enjoy being involved in. Do you have any favourite tunes, favourite burns tunes that you that you play? Yeah, but I, I'm not sure I'll be able to narrow it down to one. Um, and an, another project I was involved in um, quite a wee while ago now was the the, the production, the, the complete songs of Robert Burns, and um, that was released by Lynn Records, and it's a twelve CD set. It was produced by Professor Fred Freeman, who's a well-known academic who I work with at the Conservatoire. Uh, and I think it took seven years to compile. And I, at that time, that was a total eye-opener for me because I, I knew a lot of Burns songs, but I had no idea. Like, for every well-known Burns song, there's another five or six that are lesser-known, and there's some real beauties in there. So I, I learned a lot of new uh, Burns songs at that time. I was involved in the latter part of the project in the, in the later volumes, from, I think volume 10, 11 and 12. Um, but I think it, in the whole series, there was something like 90 Scottish folk musicians involved in the, uh, the, the compilation of this uh, body of work, which is quite impressive. So I mean, all the great singers of the day, I mean, you folk like, you know, Dick Gohan, Tony Cuff, Rod Patterson, John Moran, a good pal mm -hmm. of mine from, from Muirkirk. And, and many others um, who, who were singing these these songs. And, and I, I like the way they were, this was produced because it was very much in, in the way it would have been done in, in, in the days of Burns, you know, as opposed yeah. to you know, yeah. the, the concert hall version of Burns, which is a slightly different thing. But yeah, we had a good chat with John when we did an episode of uh, My Life with Robert Burns with, with John Morton. We had a, a good chat with him about uh, uh, the, 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 the set of CDs um, and I think I think it's a, a favourite with Burnsians. Like there probably can't be many Burnsians that don't have the set. Yeah, you know it's it's a it's a it's an amazing resource. Um, but going back to your question, like favourite songs, like 
uh, of the well-known ones, I, I mentioned all the airs. I mean, that's that's always been one of my favourites. It's a lovely tune. Uh, the lyric is one I particularly enjoy playing. Uh, and, and the lesser known ones, like I, I really like Yestreen, I had a pint of wine. That's a, that's a beautiful air. Um, but there's, there's then the, you know, the, the tunes in a faster tempo. So the, the, the tunes like um, Whistle O' The Labbit or uh, Green Grow The Rash, you know, they, they can be played in Strathspey time, which is a, a, a different idiom. So these, these are quite good tunes to play as well. And, uh, and at the faster end of the spectrum, you know, tunes like My Love She's But A Lassie Yet or, or Corn Rigs, The Deals Are Wall, they're all a bit more fiery and lively so yeah there's plenty to choose from <laughs> it certainly is <laughs> and your and your musical travels abroad have you encountered you know people who with i mean in china for example do you find anybody out there with, with knowledge of burns and burns tunes absolutely i mean it's quite remarkable um the connections you make with people um i suppose like being with a, an, an orchestra I mean, it was a, a whole stage show we'd put together, but the, the 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 end of the night was, of course, Old Lang Syne, and you know, every night in, in, in these massive concert halls in China, it, as soon as we started Old Lang Syne, you know, the audience were on their feet. I mean, they, they knew, they knew the song, um, so they, I mean, they maybe didn't know that it was that, written by Robert Burns, but uh, it's like it's almost like a worldwide anthem, you know, Old Lang Syne. Um, I suppose, like. Culturally in China, it's so different. So it, it, there's there's less of a sort of community of expats. Like if you're going to like you know Canada or Australia or, or parts of the US, there's there's, a, there's huge interest in, in Burns because of the you know the expat communities uh, in these places. When you did the the virtual Burns supper this year, um, you started off in, in the Bachelors Club. It, it must give you a great feeling playing uh, playing the, the Greg fiddle, especially at the Bachelors Club. You know, that was actually the very first time I've played the Greg fiddle in the Bachelors Club itself. I mean, I've been in the Bachelors Club for other events and played my own fiddle, but that was actually the first time. Uh, and it was a slightly bizarre experience. It was, it was filmed in the middle of January and it was a pouring wet day. And it was all socially distanced and, you know, I'm standing in the kilt and it was quite early in the morning. It was nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Unfortunately, I hadn't had too many drums the night before. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was quite a surreal experience. And the same day, I also filmed some virtual stuff from, from Burns Cottage. And later that week, I, I did some stuff for the Burns Humanitarian Award in the, in the Gaty Theatre. So I mean, it was it's actually great to get out and play some music outside the front room of the house. Um, <laughs> but uh, and, and it, it, I think we'll look back in the burn season twenty twenty one and years to come and think, remember that year we had the virtual burn supper, because there were there were positives as well. I mean, the Burns Cottage burn supper it, it, it can only really accommodate about thirty five people due to the, the space restrictions in the cottage. So once you add in the entertainers and and the speakers, there's only really room for about 20 pe people at the Burns Supper. This year, of course, it was virtual, so we could reach out to a much wider community uh, all over the world, which was a, a real positive. And there was also, the, 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 on the 23rd of January this year, you probably saw in the, the press, the, the National Trust for Scotland's Burns Big Night Inn, which yeah. was hosted by Edith Bowman. So that, that was really professionally produced as well and that had a worldwide audience too and uh, that was um, that for me that was a live performance some of it was pre-recorded but the, the, the elements of it were live on the night so that was that was quite enjoyable as well yeah yeah there's been, um, been a lot of good stuff um over the, the last few weeks uh been able to attend many more burn suppers than uh, i would have expected to this year so it's, it's yeah. been good uh, I, I think, Jim, we're, we're getting close to the end of our time. Have you got anything else you want to ask, Alistair? Apart from playing another tune, I've got to be honest with you, I just want to give a wee plug, if I can, for this. If you're a bumsy in at all and you've not got it, treat yourself. Fred can still get you on. They're absolutely fantastic. It's the complete songs of Robert Burns, and, and it's wonderful. So that's great. After the advert there, uh, uh, are you up for giving us another, another tune, Alistair? Ah, of course, yeah. Well, have you got any requests yourself? Anything you'd like me to play that's associated? No, you, whatever, whatever you choose, we'll enjoy anything. 
Right, well, I'll maybe play, a, we've had Major Graham, which is a slow air, so I'll play a couple of faster tunes. Excellent. I'll, I'll, I'll start with Whistle of the Lava, and we'll see where we end up after that, okay? <laughs> so here we go. That's fantastic, Alistair. Thanks very much for that. No problem. Douglas was popping along and I was foot tapping there. It was great. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I presume anybody that's interested in, in getting some of your music for themselves can, can get it through the website. Yes. Yeah, the, the easiest way is uh, alistairmcculloch.com. So you can visit my website and there's a, there's a shop there if you're interested in CDs or tune books. Yeah, well, well, if with your permission... <laughs> Your permission, we'll put it on the, on the podcast as well, so that folk can yeah, see it. That, that would be great. I'd appreciate that. Good, good, good. Well, it just leaves me to say a, a huge thank you for, for, for the music and also for telling us about your life with Robert Burns. Thanks very much, Alistair. Thanks for giving us your time. Thank Not you. at all. Well, thanks to you. It's been nice to talk to you both, Jim and, and, and Douglas, and uh, uh, I wish you all the best with the series ahead, um, and hopefully we can maybe meet in person at some point in the not-too-distant future. That'd be great. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>